So, uh, first up, so uh, one of the, I will say this, uh, one of the things that I talk about a lot in my class is this notion that mm, diverse ideas and diverse voices produce better results. They produce more creative and interesting results. And we actually have science and we have research that backs this up. That if you can get a group of people together who think differently, come from different backgrounds and ideas, and find a way for them to work together, they will create magical, amazing things that a group of people who all look and think the same will not come up with. I think that that is a really wonderful bit of an intro to our first speaker for this evening, uh, who actually wrote, if you look in your, your programs for this evening, a little bit uh, about how diverse ideas can come together to solve complex problems. So our first speaker this evening, uh, Luis Soto, he is an industrial designer for Target Corporation, if you have heard of that corporation. Um, uh, he is uh, terrifically excited to be here. He actually works on the hearts and hands uh, uh, product line there, one of the heart and hand, very important, I will say, uh, two of the most important things that you can probably work on. Um, he uh, has his, uh, his degree from uh, San Jose University in industrial design, uh, and he's a first generation student there. Uh, he is excited to be here, and we are so excited to start our journey together tonight. So please, help me in welcoming to the stage tonight's first Design 7 speaker, Luis Soto, everybody. Thank you. Adaptabilidad, adaptabilidad es la calidad de poder adaptarse a circunstancias o entornos diferentes. I'd like to share with you a few live moments that illustrate who I am personally and also as a designer. I grew up in a small town in Jalisco, Mexico, called San Miguel el Alto, about 300 miles east from Puerto Vallarta. I'm sure you've heard of Puerto Vallarta. <laughs> Um, I grew up as the youngest of nine kids. How do you adapt to that? I don't know. <laughs> um, growing up, I saw every single one of my siblings emigrate to the United States in search of a better opportunity, not only for themselves, but also for the ones that stay behind. When I turned 18, I decided to go and search that American dream. When I got to the border, I connected with the people that were going to help me cross the border. And we tried to cross at night. And following a series of events, I was separated from them. And I found myself stranded in the middle of the desert. After a couple of hours, I managed to find them. And eventually, was put into a trunk of a car, drove a couple of hours to be delivered to my destination, LA. This is where the true adaptability started. A new country, a new language, a new culture. That was scary. I'm sorry. One of my first jobs was working as a dishwasher at a Mexican restaurant. One of those evenings, they get really busy. The manager of the store or the restaurant comes into the kitchen and asks me if I could come out to the front of the house and help bust some tables. I froze, I panicked, I didn't know the language. What if someone asks me something? How am I gonna respond to them? Um, walking out there, cleaning this table, as I pictured, it happened. Someone right next to me asks, are you the cook? And I froze again. And awkwardly, I responded, uh, do you like your Coke, medium or large? <laughs> Due to my ability to adapt, I responded really quickly. And of course, that odd look on his face just said, you have to go to school, man. <laughs> I eventually did. I learned English while attending night school. I kept two jobs. Eventually, I moved up to be a busser, a server, a bartender. And while working as a bartender, that's where I met this beautiful Iowan farm girl, <laughs> who is now my wife. Following my um, 
citizenship process after our marriage, I had to go back home. After 10 years of being in the United States, adapting to new systems, I found myself adapting back to what I thought I knew. Um, leveraging different layers of bureaucracy, for example, going to Mexico, I had to have a driver license. I stood on line for six hours and left with no driver license. And at the same time juggling with the process of becoming a citizen of the United States. I was away for nine months from my wife and dealing with trips back and forth from my hometown to the border during that, those nine months, um, taking blood drawn, filling up um, forms, um, turning on documents, paying fees. Once I returned with my documents, well, I was able to continue with my dream. And now we have two kids, and I can tell you all about adapting to be a dad, but let's talk about design. <laughs> At the core of a designer is a problem solver, someone who is able to apply design um, thinking and who is able to adapt. Um, the projects that I'm most proud of have started in one place and based on uh, and after feedback and user testing and stacks full of sketches, I've, I've refined them. Designs, designers don't see the world as linear, but they are um, okay to serve and adapt. I've worked in toilet Portable toilets for homeless, trying to make their lives a little bit easier. I've designed digital platforms or digital design to help caregiver volunteers to have a better um, system to provide their care. While working in a arterial land placement simulator, I was able to presence a, um, a five-year-old open heart surgery. This was her second to be able to understand how it all worked. I also worked um, in product design, um, taking apart my kids' humidifier to be able to understand how to make a more sustainable footprint product. All these designs have adapted. I now work at Target as a product design in the band partnership uh, hard and hand line as a toy designer, as a cookware, uh, bakeware, and tabletop. All these designs, uh, design experiences come back to one question. Does it solve the problem? Is it intuitive? And now working at Target, will it sell? <laughs> I've shared with you how I, I've adapted to different circumstances and environments, but I still have one more um, environment to adapt, and this is the Minnesota cold winter. <laughs> Why do you live here? <laughs> Muchas gracias. <laughs>